And I think we're recording. Yay. Hello, Ava. <laughs> I screwed up already. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we're here with Liz Talley, and we're very happy to have her in the Low Country Book Club. I'm so excited to see you. I haven't seen you in ages, and it's just great to talk to you. Welcome. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. You know, I love the Low Country. I I lived there for a little while, so it has a special little place in my heart. So oh. I'm so happy you. Um, asked me to join y'all and I'm excited well, to, to be able to talk to your readers. I really, really enjoyed Deconstructed. I know a lot of folks said they did and I can't wait to talk to you about it. But before we dive into the book, because, you know, there probably are a few folks here that you don't know. So let's just introduce you to them. And I looked online for like a, a bio that I could use. I mean, of course, I, I know you, so I don't I don't need an introduction, but I figured some folks might. And so I was looking for like a bio some, and I couldn't find one. So you're going to have to tell us your bio. Oh, my uh, tell okay. us a little bit about you, where you're from, who your people are kind of thing. <laughs> sure. Okay. So I am um, Liz Talley and Susan called me Amy. So I'm also Amy Talley. That's my real person name um, in real life. Um, and so you can find me sometimes online as Amy Liz Talley, like on Instagram, because that's what people call me and know me as. Um, but I grew up in a small town in North Louisiana called Minden, Louisiana. Um, so my, my, all my people are from there. I live next door to my grandmother. My other grandmother was um, just not even a mile away. My great grandmother was not even a mile away. All my cousins were around. I could get away essentially with nothing. So quintessential small town life. Um, I met my husband in the eighth grade. We had eighth grade um, English together. I'm sorry, language arts, because that's what it was called in the eighth grade. And we had our seventh period together. And we became friends. And then in the eighth grade, we started dating or going <laughs> together and we never stopped. So I married Aww. my childhood sweetheart. Um, he, we went to college together um, and I loved college. I was active in college. I went to Louisiana Tech University, majored in English and minored in history. He was a science guy. So he majored in um, biology and he went to dental school. So I got married and followed him there. Um, we lived in New Orleans for about six years. We lived in South Carolina for one year um, while he was stationed at Paris Island. So we lived in Beaufort, which is right in the middle of Low Country. Um, and we loved it. Oh, my goodness. We loved living there. Um, it was very similar in a lot of ways to Louisiana because it was coastal and marshy. So very similar to South Louisiana, where a lot of my family, my grandmother's family is from. It looked very similar. They shrimp and um, down there and on the bayou. And so we didn't feel like we were really far away from home when we were in South Carolina. It felt like home to us. Um, I think Louisiana and South Carolina have a lot of similarities in Northern Georgia, you know, right there, yeah. that kind of coastal area, a little subtropical. We grow the same things. We have, we eat the same things. We eat shrimp and grits and down here in Louisiana and, you know, crawfish and lots of other things too. Um, as my friend said last night, we had some friends over from Georgia and they hadn't eaten a lot. And she's, she said, well, in Louisiana, a lot of the stuff we eat looks gross, but it tastes really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I still live in North Louisiana. We moved back and we live in a town called Shreveport, which is a setting for deconstructed. Um, it's a very small city. It's very traditionally Southern city. Um, which you can probably tell from the book because um, I have a lot of that in there. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my life. I have two boys. One went to the University of Arkansas. The other is at LSU. Um, and my husband works as a dentist. And, yeah, we're just living our best life up here in North Louisiana. <laughs> that sounds lovely. And thank you for that. That's like a, a very sweet You've given us a really sweet taste of of your world. Thank you. That's exactly what I was looking for. So, okay. Writing, that's just who I am. <laughs> so, Deconstructed is your, how many novels have you published now? I think it's around 30. Um, I think wow. that's like full length. I have some novellas and some short stories and some series. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it's funny. So many people, Deconstructed is, their first introduction to my work. And, mm -hmm. and then when they say, they're like, do you have any other books? And I'm like, yeah, I have like 29 other books. <laughs> um, but as you know, I started with Harlequin. I wrote romance oh. for Harlequin and I did about two or three books a year for Harlequin. Wow. So I was, I was writing up a storm. Once I, once I got published, they couldn't stop me. I just had more and more stories 
um, I've since slowed down, but so that's a, that's, that's a crazy that's pace, crazy. two or three books a year. That's a crazy pace. I, I can't imagine. I can't either. Now, now I write about one, one, maybe one and a half. Um, but I was a hungry young writer and, um, and not that romance is easy, but I just kind of knew I had a male and a female. I had to keep them apart for most of the book and then get them together. So it was right. a little different than writing women's fiction where, you know, you have a, a, a woman's journey. So there's, there's a lot more, I think, nuance to it in some ways. Um, I would never say writing romance is easy. It's not. Um, but it, I knew what was expected of me in my line at Harlequin. I knew what they wanted. I knew what readers wanted. So it was a little bit easier to deliver that. Right. So, um, yeah. So have you transitioned now completely to women's fiction or are you still in romance as well? Well, really, I love writing women's fiction. I love what what I write, which is kind of similar to you to what you write. I have a a lighter voice, so it's not you know I, it doesn't mean there aren't some serious things that happen in my stories, right. but but I have a lighter touch to it. So I love humor. Um, I love real life situations. I love authenticity in my characters. So I, I think, you know, I really like where I am. That's not to say I, I won't go back and do some romances. I have some series that I started that I really love. Um, one is called the Magnolia Ben series that's set in Louisiana. And those are romances. And I want to mm -hmm. do one more in that series to finish it out. And then I have um, the Morning Glory series, which is one of my most popular series. And it kind of verges on women's fiction. It is right. There's definite romance in it. That's pretty much what it's about. But it has a little bit more of a women's fiction edge. And then I'm reverting some of my titles from Harlequin because my line, which was super romance, was closed. I've been able to get the rights back for some of my other books. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of spiffing them up. I'm changing some of the language. And honestly, I'm kind of shutting the door a little bit on some of the bedroom stuff because I just find that. Um, the readers that I have in women's fiction um, aren't looking for explicit <laughs> sex scenes. Um, right. So, so I have a little bit of sensual, a little bit where you're like, oh, okay, they, you know, they, 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 they do well together in that scenario. And then I just kind of close the door and, and let that go. Um, or I just kind of glance over it. You know, I don't draw out a four or five page sex scene. It's more like a two, you know, kind of, um, so I'm just kind of like lessening the sensuality, lessening the language a little bit. Um, and then, you know, getting rid of like Blackberries and pagers and iPods, which when I first started, people were still using. So um, so I'm not going to completely go away from romance, but I do like what I write right now. Mm -hmm. I, I love writing it. It feels like it's a sweet spot for me and write really where I want to be in my life. And right. so it's reflected in my fiction. Right. Well, OK, so deconstructed, I, I, you know, I got a, I got an early read and I have so enjoyed this book. It's been a little while since I read it. So I, I pulled it out and I was kind of refreshing myself this morning and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I was remembering things and all that. And uh, I really did enjoy the story. Um, so tell us about you, you mentioned briefly the setting for deconstructed is is okay. shreveport right shreveport right shreveport yes right? <laughs> okay and um it, it did you pick that because that's you know where you live or is it like um it was you just want to set something there or is there a particular reason that this story needed to be in shreveport well, it's not the first time I've set a story in Shreveport. I set The Wedding War um, in Shreveport and then another book, an earlier book called Room to Breathe in Shreveport. Um, what I really like about setting it here in my town um, is, first of all, I know it. Um, mm -hmm. But second of all, Shreveport kind of, I don't want to say it's its a little bit locked in the past, but it is. Um, so here things like, um, cotillion are still important. Um, you know, debutante seasons still happen. Um, there's a little bit of, you know, you, you take something like the Regency era with all of its rules and its, um, you know, white glove wearing type of thing and you pull it into modern, to modern scenario. And I feel like that's kind of where Shreveport is. So someone like Cricket, 
who grew up in the right neighborhood, who was a debutante. She was in a certain sorority. She would never send out an invitation that wasn't engraved. Um, she would always, you know, say yes, ma'am and no, sir. There's a little bit of that gentil. Gen, I, I guess there's just a, it makes it sound kind of stuffy and um, which it's really not, but there's that element that's still left over where, you know, there's certain things you do in certain ways you do things. So that became very easy for me to set it here because it provided really good conflict between my heroines. Um, so, so I, yeah. <laughs> how much of you was in cricket? Well, you know, I grew up a little bit more like Ruby. I grew up a little bit in a very working class neighborhood. Um, my parents were um, hardworking people and I was very well loved and I had a beautiful, wonderful childhood, but I didn't grow up, you know, being, my parents weren't country club set, so to speak, or anything like that. So, um, and I grew up in the eighties in a time where you, there was a kind of a separation. If you remember back, you think about all those movies and there were the preppy kids and then there were the kind of, you know, uh, rough around the edge kids or whatever. So I kind of grew up in that era. And then as Doug and I, you know, grew up and I hung out with different people, I could see those differences. So I always kind of grew up a little bit with a chip on my shoulder, so to speak, because I didn't have much growing up and I wanted things. Um, so as I've gotten older and and Doug and I are involved in, um, and we know lots of people that are in Cotillion, well, we're in Cotillion, but we don't usually go to Cotillion, but we're in Cotillion and our friends are debutantes. And so um, you know, my son was a stag for the debutante ball. So we do some of those things. Um, and to me, it's it's just interesting. So there's a little bit of cricket in me, um, you know, living in a gated community, kind of this one particular life. But there's a lot of Ruby in me um, also. So I felt like I was a good person to tell these women's stories. Mm -hmm. Because I kind of live both lives. Um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be like cricket. I'm not from old Shreveport money. Um that sort of thing. But um, I'm I'm in touch with enough people who are that it was kind of interesting to write about her life and no, really know her life. And then also to really know Ruby's life. Um, and she's from Mooringsport, which is a town we have our camp in. Um, and it's just um, it's a really cool area. Um, so I know both of them. <laughs> right. And and I think often that's true. You know, you have a little bit of you in, in multiple characters. Right. Um, but I did not realize um, that you identified almost equally with both of them, I guess. I, I When I was reading it, I could see you as Cricket. You know, yeah. it's like you were the Cricket character in my head. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to have to adjust now and think about you as Ruby <laughs> and who I'm going to cast as Cricket in my head. Yeah. It's interesting. Well it is so that, interesting. Yeah. It, I mean, I think we, and you know, as, as a writer, every character you bring in, there's pieces of in that character that you oh, recognize yes. in yourself. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I am a storyteller and I, I mind those things, but I also know those, you know, I know people and I mind right. that I never really write one person that's exactly like a person I know, but I can take some of those characteristics and, and put those with those people. So, so where did you get the, 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 uh, the material for for Cricket's mother, Marguerite. Is that right? It's been, yeah. <laughs> well, when I was growing up in Minden, I used to. My mom used to take me to get my Easter dress at this place called Birch Young Fashions in Minden, and there was a lady there named Marguerite who always waited on us, and she, I just loved her. But she's not really like Marguerite, but I loved her name. It sounded very mm -hmm. kind of old Southern to me, you know. Um, and then the, her mother is. She's such an interesting character because there's lots of mothers that are like that. They're a little critical of their daughters. They have very high expectations. There are certain ways you do things. There are certain things you do. Um, but yet she's a little bit of a character, right? I mean, she's swilling mm -hmm. her martinis. She wants to have her happy hour. Um, and she secretly, you know, does some things, you know, like hide her candy bars. But she presents this one persona to the world. And then underneath, she's a little bit of another persona. And I wanted to explore her. I wanted her to be a character that seemed kind of cardboard, but not really. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, so I, I, which I know some of those kind of people, like this is who I am, but underneath there's some other things and that are interesting about them. Um, and I wanted Cricket to just see her as, as her mother. And I thought Marguerite was an easy person to see as the role of mother, you know, mm -hmm. and then we unwrap her a little bit as it goes. 
So, um, yeah, I know plenty of marguerites. This is the way you do it. This is the way you, you cut your hair. This is, you know, you always wear foundation underneath your clothes. Um, because my mother, <laughs> honey, you'll feel so much better if you just put on a little lipstick. Yeah, put a little lipstick on, and uh, we're not going out with a little support underneath. My grandmother <laughs> was a big believer. You know, I always think about Dolly Parton's character in uh, Still Magnolias. Still Magnolias, yeah. Like, I have lycras on this thigh. Lycra on those thighs, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to talk about lycra. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how uncomfortable. Um, so, were you working anything out with this book? Liz, I've heard that some authors do that. Use writing as kind of therapy. Not me, of course, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think every book I write, there is a new realization, a new appreciation for the kind of characters that I write, which they feel very real to me. Um, in some of my books, I found that they've been more therapeutic than others. This one was a little more fun for me because I was, I don't want to say exploiting, but kind of exploiting the culture I live in, the cultures that I know. Um, and because it was so familiar to me, it was very authentic. So I really appreciated Ruby. I appreciated her struggles. I appreciated the mistakes she made in her past and how she was so determined not to make those mistakes again. And, and, what I appreciate about, appreciate about Cricket is that sh she's the woman we all know. We all know someone that we're just kind of like, you know, she's, we want her on our committees because she's going to get her, you know, she's going to get work done. Um, she's the right person. She knows the right people. She has the right name. She has the right position. But you, you don't expect any of the things that she does in this book because Cricket, when she gets angry, there's something she channels in herself that is a little bit audacious. Mm -hmm. And I love that audacity that she had, that she was going to, you know, wear a wig, and go catch her husband, and that she was going to climb on the back of a motorcycle with this tow truck driver who was really rough around the edges. And, and I just, there was so much about her that was really fun. So maybe it was working through something, maybe a, a you know, I don't give a damn type attitude <laughs> um, that some of us, when we get closer I'm about to be 50 this year that we stop worrying so much about what other people think about us and we worry about, um the real friends we have in our life and who we truly are so yeah maybe I know this was gonna be a therapy session <laughs> <laughs> okay so um Let's see. Uh, there are questions in here that some of the members of the group submitted. And so these are a little bit out of order. Some of them go back into your writing and that kind of thing. And then we pop back into the book. So I don't want to miss anybody. So I'm just going to go down my list. So uh, Missy Ann wanted to, to know. Okay. Missy Ann wanted to know, when did you decide you wanted to write professionally? And I, I had another question that I had in here was writing your first career. Or did you do something else for a while? So maybe roll those together. And sure. what do we have? Um, so I was an English teacher for many years. Um, when I got pregnant with my second child, I wanted to live the dream of being a stay-at-home stay mother. Um, so I did. I quit and I stayed home with my children. But to be quite honest, I was so lonely. Um, I didn't. We had just moved to Shreveport from New Orleans, and so I didn't know hardly anyone. So I spent my days with babies, and I read books. Um, and what, what I really loved was I read a lot of historical romances. Um, they were like, you know, macaroni and cheese. They just swept me away to another world. Um, so I was a big fan of Julia Quinn, who does the Bridgertons, which you know, the new season came out. Um, and I love the book that I read of hers was called um, To Sir Filled with Love. It's Eloise's story. Mm -hmm. And when I finished that book, I remember thinking, if I were going to write a book, I want one just like that. So then I was kind of like, oh, I should write a book. <laughs> so I just played around with a historical romance for about three years and I finished it and I didn't know what to do with it. So I got online and I found some romance writers and saw, you know, I didn't know the difference between an editor or an agent or anything. I knew nothing, but I found RWA, which is Romance Writers of America, and I decided to join it. And then when I joined it, I joined it for a couple of months and didn't realize there were actual chapters. So I found a chapter and there was one in Shreveport. And so I, I began seriously about 2006, 2007, I joined RWA and began kind of my journey. Um, I really didn't know that I wanted to write a book. I always loved writing um, and I loved reading, but that was never like in my, I just never thought about it. It just didn't seem like 
something I could do. It seemed far beyond me, you know, um, that I've done it sometimes still to me is amazing when I think about, oh my gosh, I've written, I've written all these books. And you haven't just done it once. You've done it 30 yeah. times. Yeah. And I, and I'm, I'm working on one right now. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. And, and it's still amazing too. I think a lot of my friends, I think they forget. It. And then when they introduce me to someone and they ask what I do and I say, I'm a writer. And then they're just like, holy cow. Yeah. Cause they're like, have you, do you have something published? I'm like, not only do I have something published, I have 30 somethings published. And then they're like, wow. And so most people know me as Amy and my kids know me as Amy. Um, but, but sometimes I'm even, I even marvel at I'm actual Liz too. Um, so that's kind of how I got started and, and how it all began. Okay. So Rebecca Kendall wants to know, Cricket and Ruby are so different from each other. And I'm wondering if pieces of them or traits came from anyone you know. We kind of talked a little bit about that, but maybe you can expound on that. If there are other people that you pulled from? You know, I no no person in particular. I think that they're just kind of like a, um, a, a mis, mishmash of, um, that's hard to say, mishmash of people that I know. Um, so a lot of my friends, I have a good friend named Dixie. Um, I mm -hmm. use Quinny, which is her main name is Marguerite's name. And Dixie's my person that I call like when I need to know, like, do I need to send a gift for this person? Or do I need to, you know, how do I handle this? She's my social um, guide, so to speak. So I would say a little bit of Dixie, you know, a little bit of her. Um, I have a couple of friends. Well, I mean, just, yeah, I mean, I would say a lot of my friends, there's a little bit of, of them in my cricket character. Um, and then for my past, I would say Ruby, Ruby's the kind of character I love writing um, because she's messed up. And then she's on the outside. She's this very tough nut to crack. Um, but underneath, she has all these longings and these desires and these dreams. And she she pitches in. I mean, she didn't have to help cricket. But there's right. something in her that wants to help, that wants to be of use. And so she's one of my favorite kind of characters to write. Um, and I think I know lots of people that are like that, that people are like, I'm gonna, I count them out. And they're like, oh, heck no, you're not counting me out. So Ruby's like that. So no one specific, but lots of different pulling from different people that I know. OK, so Jackie asked a similar question. She said, how do you relate to the characters? Is there one you identify more so than the other? And again, I think we touched on that, but I'm, I'm kind of. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think I, I love them both equally. And I think, I mean, that, that sounds like a, a cop out, but um, there's so many elements of Ruby that I appreciate. Um, so I do identify with her dreams, with her want, her need to succeed and follow her dreams. Cause that's what I did. Right. right. I mean, I had a full-time job offer and my husband and I discussed it and I just told him, I said, I've got my my full in with an editor. I'm working with this editor. Um, I just don't want to take that job. So I turned down a full-time job and I rolled the dice on myself. And so I feel like, you know, I feel those parts of Ruby that are like me, like, let me take a risk. Let me take a chance because Ruby had plenty of opportunities to, to not do that. You know, to, mm -hmm. I mean, she sewed that dress for cricket and brought it to her. Um, if she didn't have that dream, she wasn't going to nurture that dream. She wasn't going to go for it. She wouldn't have done it. So, you know, that element I appreciate in her for cricket. I think cricket's older. Um, I think a lot of people just don't assume that cricket's going to do what she does. And I love that part of her. <laughs> so I, that that's what I like. I like the, the cricket that's, you know, that gets out of the car and is like, I'm going to get my evidence, you know, and then she charges <laughs> in and there's a dog and, she doesn't get the picture. It's just a picture of herself. Cause I mean, that's a little bit of me cause that's the kind of stuff that I do. You know, I've, I've filmed and taken miss pictures and miss film things my entire life. So cricket's selfie of her shocked face or her upset face would be straight out of my playbook. <laughs> so. so we've talked a, bit, a little, little bit about the setting and about some of the characters um, who at Betty Erb wanted to know what your inspiration was to write Deconstructed. And here, let's talk a minute about the plot, about the story. Did this okay. come to you in any particular way? I mean, or. Well, yeah. So this book I've had in on my back burner for about 10 years. I actually um, got my agent by pitching this book. 
Um, but at the time that I got my agent, I had some other projects and it just kept getting pushed further and further back. And I just, I loved it. So we just kept calling it my cricket idea. So eventually I just, I said, I'm going to write it. And I did. And um, the plot kind of came from a, a while back, um, a friend of a friend of a friend. Um, I, we were talking and she was talking about someone who thought her husband was cheating and hired like a private investigator. And then um, the husband knew about it and paid the private investigator off. And so like a, a real thing that, that happened or was rumored to have happened. I'm not sure that actually happened, but room, you know, whatever I heard it. And I thought, Hmm, that sounds like a good, that sounds like a good premise for a story. So my whole, it started with that, with a, a real life thing or real life gossip. I never really know if those kind of things are true or not, but it sounded, you know, sounded interesting. Um, and so I, I want, that's how I began. And then I wanted cricket to, to, I loved moonlighting when I was growing up and I loved mm -hmm. rooming still. And I mentioned those in the book. So I wanted cricket to, to basically try to hire these people and they weren't doing their job. So she was going to do it. So my whole thing is I wanted cricket to, a little campiness, you know, I wanted her to try to feel like she could do it. She could get mm -hmm. the goods on her husband. And then of course, in the course of trying to prove that her husband's cheating on her, she finds out he's doing a whole lot more. Um, and she gets a little bit, you know, in too deep. And so toward the end of the book, she gets a little scared. You know, she realizes, Oh, I'm playing, you know, I I'm playing detective, but someone could really get hurt. So, um, so yeah, that was a little bit of the plot. That's where the real kind of idea came from and the way I developed it. I wanted Cricket to be exasperated with these men who weren't doing their job. And so dang it, she was going to do it for herself. So Pat wants to know, she says, as, I, as I've mentioned before, after reading the ARC, I absolutely loved this one. All your books are so good, but this took readers on a different trip. How did it feel setting the story in Louisiana where you live I love the main characters owning and working in an antique store. Are you a collector of antiques? Oh, well, that's a good question. Well, in some ways I am. My grandmother um, on my dad's side, she was a collector of antiques and we went antiquing often. Um, and so I grew up in my teen years going to antique shops. So I had a, a real appreciation um, and I do have some pieces. I'm not an avid collector. I don't have anything super expensive, um, but the pieces that I collect are meaningful to me. So mm -hmm. they might be something like my grandmother had, or a lot of the things that hang in my home. Um, I have a couple of antique pictures and um, two tier table in my office. I might get tired. It's kind of easy. So I'll come mm -hmm. away, but oh, I got to go this. No, I got to go this way. See that table right there? My printer's on. That's a oh yeah. That's a drop leaf table that my grandmother bought in an antique store, um, and it makes a big giant table. But it's one of those drop leaves, which is really clever. Um, so I have like some of those pieces. Nothing that's like super collector or antique. Um, and then with for Ruby for deconstruct for actually the her brand deconstructed. Um, my great grandmother was a seamstress, and she was a seamstress in Houston for many, many years. And so she made her own hats and she made her own clothing and she made, I mean, all of my stuff when I was growing up, all my choir dresses. And um, so I, I knew a little bit about, so I don't sew, but my grandmother did. And so that to me felt as someone who grew up with not much, like she would know how to do that because you would make your own curtains, you'd make your pillows, you'd make your dresses. So Ruby's grand did that and taught Ruby how to do it. Um, so that felt like authentic to me for, um, how I grew up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. My grandmother, uh, was a seamstress as well. And she did, uh, tailored suits and that kind of thing. And then she had a drapery shop and my mother used to sew a lot. I mean, she, like when I started school, she made all my dresses and some of them had this embroidery, the smocking and all that. I can't thread a needle. I don't know. <laughs> Look, my husband, because he's a dentist, he sews all of our buttons and sews all of our hands. My husband does that too. I mean, he's, he's a business consultant, but he sews <laughs> on a button if it needs to be sewn on because I don't have a clue. I know. I'm like, buddy, if you can sew in someone's mouth that tiny of a space, you can sew. There you go. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> 
Okay, so Kathy wants to know, oh, she says, I enjoyed this book so much, just the right mixture of funny and zany and a lot about friendships. I like the main characters and was rooting for them every step of the way. My question is, are you planning a sequel to take Cricket and Ruby on to the next stage in their lives? Okay, so at first, no, I was not. But the more I heard from people, I realized that I really wanted to do a follow-up book. So I'm writing it right now. Um, and this one that I'm writing, I'm calling it If the Dress Fits. Oh. Um, and I'm putting Ruby, well, first of all, which is going to be really fun. I haven't written the scenes yet because I'm just now kind of getting into it. But Marguerite's taking Ruby to New York City for Fashion Week in the fall um, for her si to, to meet her sister who works for Vogue. And so I'm going to have Ruby and Marguerite in New York City. So I'm going to need, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like what kind of things is more, I want Marguerite to kind of like bumble into something, you know, that she thinks is proper. And then she ends up, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. Um, and Cricket is getting her PI license. She <laughs> a part-time PI. So she thinks this is a great idea because everybody has a hobby. She doesn't really have a hobby. Her daughter is about to go to high school. She's divorced. And so she thinks that Jute needs a woman's touch. Um, so she thinks that she's going to you know, work part time. So when it opens, she's still taking her course and she is going to try to to work for Duke, um, which is, you know, we're going to get her into some trouble. Um, but the whole the whole plot of the book is going to revolve around um, a theft ring. Um, of someone is stealing and working parties and get togethers and showers and debutante party parties. And they're, they're lifting some things and reselling them on Poshmark. Um, and so Cricket's going to bust this ring up. Um, so while Ruby's, you know, getting ready for her first show, her first, um, uh, you know, collection she's putting together. So oh, these two sounds fun. On. yeah. So I, hopefully it'll be good. I hope I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. It sounds fun. Yeah. Um, okay. And we're skipping around a little bit here, but does anyone in your family read your books? Now my mother always read my book. She had a stroke a year ago. And so it affected her, um, her speech and mm -hmm. a little bit of her cognitive abilities. Um, so I think like she, it's, it's taking her a while. My sister-in-law reads it usually. Um, but that's about it. I really, I have friends who read, but my family doesn't read a lot of my books. My mother read everyone up until this, this part. My dad is an avid reader. He's never read it. My husband has never read a single one of my books. Really? No, I think mine read like my first two, maybe three. And, and, you know, then he would like start them, but somehow he didn't get finished. I, I don't, and now I'm just like, if he wants to read them, he'll ask, but I'm not like handing it to him and saying, you have to read this on the plane. You know, I'm not doing that anymore, but um, they, well, my husband just doesn't, he reads like biographies. He likes yeah. to read about music. Um, he's not a, a lot, really a fiction reader. Um, right. He reads some fiction, but if he does, it's like Jack Reacher, you know, something where someone's yeah. like, but yeah. Jim likes Jack Reacher and that that's his cup of tea. And, you know, I, I mean, I know who my audience is. is. It's not my husband. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I know who my readers are. It's not him. Not him. <laughs> um, okay. So. Marianne asked, she said, I felt like Cricket has been very underestimated by everyone in her life for a long time. Ruby was the perfect person to be her partner in crime. And I'm curious if the two characters were as you planned them or did they somewhat help to shape themselves as you wrote them? Oh, I think that's a great question. And I think that's true. Um, because when you start with an idea, you think, I know who this character is and I know what I want this character to do, or I know the journey this character is going to take. Um, I surprised myself a little bit because with Ruby, I introduced Dak, her ex, and gave them a background that I thought was kind of interesting where Ruby kind of wrecked her life um, a little bit on purpose because she was afraid of success, which made it nicer when she decides she's going to grab success. Like she's learned, she's learned that she can grab that. And that's what she's really grappling with in this second book is, you know, she's happy to be with Dak, but you know, love or money or love or success, you know, mm -hmm. she's, she's trying to, 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 to do that. So I didn't really know that's how Ruby was going to go. And I didn't really know that was going to be her struggle um, because I think her struggle is where does she belong? Who is she and where does she belong? And can she dare to grasp a dream that she 
only could just imagine in the smallest little places of her heart. Um, for cricket, yeah, I mean, cricket, I knew I wanted to have somebody that was going to to take the bull by the horns. Um, she surprised me a lot um, in a couple of ways. I wasn't planning on any kind of romance. And when I brought Griff in, for some reason, when Griff showed up, I, 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 so I wanted like a wise cracking Dave Addison. Okay. Like from Moonlighting, if those of you who watch Moonlighting, his character was, it was Bruce Willis and he was wise cracking, sarcastic. He needled Maddie, you know, just, and it was fun. It was that crackly, beautiful tension like Sam and Diane had. Mm -hmm. and so I kind of wanted that kind of wise cracking, handsome. And then Dak showed up and he was like emotionally constipated <laughs> um, so you know, I mean, he was just like, you know, like, I can't believe you don't have your spare tur, you know, fussing. And and so I that was surprising that she was kind of attracted to this kind of big grump. Um, so I didn't know that was going to happen. And I'm having a little fun with that, too. You know, as we open up, I have a little bit of Griff and um, in cricket, you know, in the very beginning. Um, and so I'm going to kind of drag that out a little bit because I think that's fun. But um, yeah, I, I think you always are surprised by your characters and and you mold them as you go and they do things that you're like, oh, well, that's cool. You know, that's that's interesting. I didn't know she was going to say that. I didn't know she was going to do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But that's a great so question. I, Very true. Eileen says, I also love this book and felt it was quite different from your other books. I'm also wondering what took you in this direction and how you came up with Cricket and Ruby. If not a sequel, wh what else are you working on? And I think you, you touched on that you are working on a sequel, but is there another project that you're working on in addition to that? Yeah, well, I always have ideas. <laughs> um, I do have an idea. Um, I have a book that I want to write um, that I've written a proposal for um, about um, sisters. Um, I don't have any sisters, so this is going to be new for me. I'm going to have to reach outside my wheelhouse because I just have stinking brothers. But um, oh, honey, I have call me anytime. I have a sister. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. Well, um, so I have one who lives in, in California. She's older and her name is August. And then I have one that lives in Louisiana and her name is Shane. And, and neither one of them know about each other. So they find out when the mother dies. So Shane's mother dies and she finds these hidden journals in this nook and cranny. She's looking for some papers that are, she's a, she's a graduating senior. So she's really young and she finds all this information on this person. She thought maybe it was a baby who had died, but then she finds the wedding invitation um, that her mother has a wedding invitation for her older sister. So she drives to California. She's supposed to be on spring break, go into Florida with some friends. Instead, she lets her dad and everybody else think that she's going to the beach in Florida, but she goes the other way and she drives to California um, and surprises this sister. Um, so it's going to be a, you know, a journey. The sister is going to take a road trip with her back to Louisiana because they're both heirs and, um, and they learn a little bit about each other along the way. And then there's a hot quarterback that they actually, that breaks down the side of the road that has a, his of daughter. Course. There has to be a hot quarterback. There's a hot quarterback and um, very masculine hot quarterback. And, um, and so I give a little romance for August, who's the oldest, older sister. And then, yeah, so I've got this idea and it's, it's not a sleuthy thing. It's just more of a, um, it's a little bit in line of my book, adulting which is about, you know, some of the past hurts that you have and what you do with those past hurts and how they create who you are. Um, so August never knew her mother was living. She didn't even know. She thought her mother was dead. That's what her father told her. And so she now is rediscovering that she actually had a mother and her mother dealt with some mental Ill illness. So there's going to be a little bit of like in my books, adulting, a little bit of, um, uh, seriousness, but then also plenty of light things. Cause we've got a, you know, we've got two dogs and two women and a quarterback and a convertible. So it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Sounds like a <laughs> fun time. Yeah. That's one I have that I'm going to be working on. Um, at some okay. Point. Very cool. Yeah. I can't wait to read that. Yeah. All right. So back to you, tell us three things about yourself that we might not guess. Ooh. Okay. Well, um, I love to fish so I can bait. A I would not have guessed that. I can tie, I can tie a fly. Um, I, I can do all that. So I love to fly fish and I love to just kind of fish off the pier. Um, fishing. 
Um, let's see, something that you wouldn't know. Oh, um, okay, so uh, I mean, well, no, that's not a good one. I, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot. I'm an open book. Y'all hey, know everything about me. The, the fishing was good. That was good. You came up with one good <laughs> thing. That's good. I'm trying to think. I love, I like cocktails. So my husband and I like making craft cocktails. Very, mm -hmm. you know, very into that. And I'm very picky about my coffee. I like fresh ground beans. I have certain ones that I like. Um, my fresh ground, oh, I make cappuccinos. And so I'm real... I'm really into coffee. I love coffee and um, I'm picky about it. So I'm very picky about my coffee. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there anything else I haven't asked you that you think we should know? Oh, goodness. Well, you know, I love making new friends. So if you don't follow me, I know probably a lot of your readers do follow me because we've been in groups together. So some of them, right. you know, they know me. I get around, I guess. Um, but I would love for them to, you know, sign up for my newsletter or find me on Facebook or find me on Instagram. Um, and I don't mind if they want to like my personal page, which is Amy Liz Tally, or if they want to, I mean, I hope I mean, a lot of my readers do both because right. I post, you know, funny or like more stuff on my Amy Liz tally um, Facebook than I do my Liz tally, um, which I try to keep very bookish, you know. Right. Um, so but I would love to have new friends. I, I love that. And I love when you tell me things like, you know, if you reach out, I, somebody did that today and they were it was about adulting. They had read adulting and they were like, you know, it made me think and it was, you know, whatever. Um, I love when people tell me or even if they find something that they're like, that's not I didn't think that was true or or that's weird or whatever. It doesn't bother me for someone to say, you know, I found this. I'm not really sure that's right. I've had a couple of readers catch some things that I that I had wrong and it gives me an opportunity to change it because I'd be like, Oh, I have no idea. You know, I did research. I do try to do research, but you can't research every detail. It's, it's really hard for most writers to do that. So I just, I like interacting with readers. So that's cool. So maybe that. Okay. Well, we're going to post this interview in Love Country Book Club and there may be uh, folks who have additional questions or comments or something they want to say to you, though, I'll ask them to tag you if they do so that you can see yeah. it. And then just, you know, if you get a chance to pop in and respond, that'd be great. But we'll leave it pinned to the top for, I think, through the weekend. And okay. then, you know, there may be some some additional things to chat about. But this has been fun. It's lovely That's to catch fun. up with you. Oh, and I know one thing I wanted to say. I do have yes. one low country book. I have yeah. one book that was written in the low country. It was written in fictional Beaufort. It's called Come uh -huh. Home to Me. Now, it's mm -hmm. not a mystery. It's a kind of like a heart emotional, you know, little bit of a romance, but it's called. I don't think I've read that one. I'll yeah. have to read that. It's, it's actually one that um, I have probably some of the highest ratings on because it's a, I don't know. It's just a real emotional, sweet mm -hmm. um, book about forgiveness. It's a, it's a lot about oh. forgiveness. So, um, but I wanted to mention that because I know you have low country readers and most of my stuff's in Louisiana, but I do have one book in South Carolina. <laughs> We we do, and of course, it's called the Low Country Book Club, and and basically how we set this up is it's for people who love books set in the Low Country, and and then also other Southern fiction because there we all read a lot, and there's only so many books actually set in the Low Country, and of course there are new ones written every year, but right. we have some voracious readers, and so we kind of widen that circle, you know, to other Southern fiction, and then. The, the books that we read, you know, one a month, the books of the month and that kind of thing, those are either um, they're, they're either it's set in the low country or they're southern books or they're beach books, you know, books that are like summer reads. That, that, and yeah. so but I'm thinking that everybody who likes those type of books will also like other books in common. So we talk about books set everywhere, um, but the book of the month is usually one that's southern or low country or, you know, some flavor of, of that. So right. anyway, we, well, we kind I of brought this in book too. So, um, but I, I did want to mention that because I know that low country is a little thematic element right. and I do have we, one. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. It's yeah. lovely to see you. Thank you yeah, so much for being you. here. And I look forward to seeing if there are any other questions and, and chatting and so forth further. And we hope to have you back. Yeah, I loved it. Thank y'all so much for having me. And thank y'all everyone for, reading the book and leaving reviews. Y'all are great. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. It's good to see you, Liz. <laughs> Bye.